After every unit, your teacher has the chance. To teach a lesson about the lessons and the context to enhance. But what do you suppose our teacher has us do? He skips the lesson and presents us a, a digital LEQ. Elocution needs historic evidence, reasoning that can cooperate and advance. A complex. This is that Dr. John P. I wish what am I? We drop it. Like a screencast, like that's on fire. Student create a screen crash for you to like, subscribe, and share. We know you've all had the John Green and Steam Highland you can bear. If we had the most views at 10 p.m. Eastern on the fifth day, we can earn 500 bonus points, which is an A in my pocket without much more. Uh, Without much more, without much more than fair or I do, uh, we present, 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 yeah, a Disney LEQ. Our project is on the effects of the climate exchange on Afro Eurasia. Our bigger than your questions. What were the economic effects of the climate exchange in Africa Eurasia? Contrast the effects of the climate exchange in Eurasia and Africa, and how did the climate exchange contribute to the development of Afro Eurasia's culture slash society? This is our thesis, and this is our contextualization. I will be talking about the goods that were exchanged. This diagram shows where goods came from and where they went to. Many goods were exchanged, and some examples of goods that impacted Afro-Eurasia were corn, potatoes, tobaccos, chili peppers, quinine, and coca, cocaine. Corn and potatoes led to an increased population in Europe because they were able to support larger countries. Tobacco was a form of medicine and currency. Chili peppers expanded local cuisine. For example, in Korea, it led to the development of kimchi. Quinine was also a medicine for malaria. This helped Europe to conquer many tropical empires. Lastly, cocaine was used to, to increase creativity among Europeans. These examples show that Africa Eurasia did not only provide America with staples, but they also received many staples from the New World. These exchange goods changed the way of life of Afro-Eurasia by leading to an increase in the European population, introduction of new currency, expansion of medicine, and, de and development of local cuisines. Luxury goods like silver increased the, wealth, the wealth of Europe and China. The climate exchange also had economic effects on Afro-Eurasia, some being positive, some being negative. Um, some of the positives can be seen in this photo. Silver mined in places like Bolivia became the first true global commodity. This helped make Spain to be the dominant power it was during the 16th century. The silver that made its way to Asia went to China. This helped to facilitate global trade and other goods. Because of global trade, Europe underwent what is known as a commercial revolution, in which colonization not only gave new goods, but also new markets for European products, leading to an increase in commerce. Now, there were some negative impacts as mentioned before, and it could be seen in this slide. So, the Ming emperors transitioned to requiring taxes to be paid only with silver. This burdened the rural poor in China. They had to reinvent the way in which they earned money and exchange their labor and goods for silver. Too much silver led to an inflation in Spain. This caused an increase in prices of goods, ultimately leading to the economic downturn of Spain. The wealth that Spain did acquire led them to do more international things. This led to multiple wars, which cost them a lot of money. 
An increase of commerce led to the creation of an economic system called mercantilism. This was accomplished by establishing more colonies in which was only allowed to participate in commerce with the motherland. This led to economic and political conflicts between European nations and eventually led to wars. During the Columbian Exchange, over 11 million enslaved Africans were traded from Africa to the Americas. They were sought after for two reasons. One, they were already immune to European diseases, and two, they knew the environment less than the Europeans did. This new Atlantic slave trade expanded the institution of slavery. Enslaved people were usually captured by powerful tribes during raids on neighboring villages. These enslaved people were then brought to the west coast of Africa where they were imprisoned and traded to European and American slave traders in exchange for guns and other goods. Once they arrived in the Americas, they would work long hours in sugar fields or raise cotton or tobacco. This would encourage African warfare, disrupt African culture, and increase cultural diffusion. So here is a direct quote from Alada Ikwanu, a former slave and abolitionist, and it describes his experience when he was getting kidnapped into slavery. Venereal syphilis is a disease that was discovered during the Columbian Exchange. It was spread from America to Afro-Eurasia. It went from Europe down and around to Africa, respectively. It was spread because of sailors going back and forth, and they didn't transport many wives or many women, so they only had animals and cargo with them on the ships, and these were very long voyages. Tobacco was a very successful cash crop during this time, which was mainly benefited by European countries. The other reason why, or other role tobacco played was as a killer, and it was a serious breeder for lung cancer. Syphilis supports our thesis is because syphilis created much infer infertility in the old world or in Europe and Africa. It ended a lot of family bloodlines. Tobacco it was like I said, a very serious, a very successful cash crop, and it also killed many people due to people smoking it and chewing. So these are our themes. Human and environment is one of them, and in the new world crops were able to go into old world crops, that led to a growth of population. Theme two was cultural development and interactions. Practically, the fact that um, goods from the new world. Uh, was brought into the old world and it changed their way of life and food and cuisine were um, influenced by these new foods. Government, people sent uh, conquerors to conquer new land which often led to conflict and this was the start of imperialism and expansion. Theme 4 was economic system obviously new currencies forced old economies to adapt to new currencies like silver Theme 5 was social interactions and organization. The Europeans captured Africans and used them as slaves. Trade of new world goods such as silver allowed for isolated countries to become more integrated in society like China and Japan. Referring back to the big idea questions mentioned in the beginning of, of this presentation, I urge you guys to pause the video here and answer these questions yourselves while looking back at everything that was said. The first question was, what were the economic effects of the Columbian Exchange on Afro-Eurasia? Silver and an increase of commerce led to great wealth. It was made possible because of new colonies that not only brought new goods, but also new markets. This ultimately led to an increase of wealth. The second in question is, contrast the effects of the Columbian Exchange in Eurasia and Africa. One answer could be, um, in Eurasia, there was a lot of population growth, wealth, and medicine. In Africa, there was a loss of population due to slavery, um, disruption of African culture, and there was a presence of new weapons, like guns, because of trade. The third big idea question is, how did the Columbian Exchange contribute to the development of Afro-Eurasia's culture slash society? Chili peppers, for example, um, caused new cuisine to be developed, more currency, um, such as tobacco, and then there were new forms of creative inspiration, such as cocaine, which prompted ideas in many philosophers and creatives' minds. These were the sources used. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If not, please press the like button, hit subscribe, and share this video. Bye, and thanks for watching!